Yellow class, welcome to your home learning for Friday. So I'm just going to run through what I'd like you to do today. So again, starting with our phonics, hopefully the board's going to work for us. So pause the video, have a quick flick through the speed sounds, pick out a couple that you can have a go at, and make sure you know all of those. I'm not going to go through the tricky words too much today, because in a minute I'd like you to see if you can have a little bit of a spelling test and then put those words into some sentences. Phonics play, you can have a go at revising the sounds that we were learning this week. So we were learning the long A, we looked at the AI, which comes in the middle, which is a phase three sound. We looked at the split vowel digraph, the A and the E, and that's a phase five. And then AY is also a phase five, so you can have a look at playing some games with those. So today we've got spelling, so get somebody to give you a spelling test. See if you can maybe put them into a dictated sentence and you might be able to use some of those long A words in that dictated sentence to see if you can remember how to spell some of those. Remember AI tends to come in the middle, the split vowel digraphs near the end with that E on the end of the word and the AY is always on the end of the word. You've got spelling shed, so you can have a go on spelling shed. You've got your activities on there with the A, the A sound. You've also got the er uh suffix, and you've got our tricky words of the week, so you can have a go at those. Guided reading, make sure you do some reading. Um, we're thinking about the language that the author is using to describe some different things. So how does the writer make you, as the reader, think something about a character? What words have they used? Recite the five times table. So have a go at reciting the five times table all the way through. That one's a little bit more tricky than some of the others. What we need to remember is that little pattern at the end. So we've got a five and a zero, five and a zero. We've got that pattern all the way down. So try to remind yourself of that pattern as you are reciting the five times table. We're going to do some measuring today, so you will need a tape measure or a ruler. I'm going to attach another little video that I did that you can have a look at. Um, I don't think it was me and Adam, I think it was just me, so that you can have a go at measuring yourselves and using tape measures. Just be careful with the tape measures because not all of them have zero right on the end. Sometimes you've got a little bit of space. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to measure some objects and I around your house so write down the objects that you have measured and then write down here how tall they were in centimeters okay um, so we're going to do some measuring we're going to carry on with our poetry in our literacy sessions today so yesterday you were looking at that winter image and you completed your ideas that chart where you're pulling all your ideas together to get ready to do some writing. So you've got that, you need to have that, that's there to help you. It's not cheating to have a look at that, that's to remind you of your thoughts. When you're writing, you might want to look back at this image. I'm just going to show you some poems. Now I know you might not be able to read them very clearly on there. These are three different types of poems. So I've got a poem here. And I just wanted to remind you how poems are set out. So when you're doing your writing today, I don't want you to write a narrative and a great big chunk of writing. In poetry, we do play with language a little bit and we write in slightly different ways. So you can see on all of these, they are set out in little verses. So this one here, winter, winter. Winter, winter, cold and ice, a mug of cho hot chocolate would be nice. Winter, winter, long dark nights, kids bundle up for snowball fights. And if you notice there, this poem is a rhyming poem. So the last words on the end of those lines always rhyme. Now, if you want to try that, that is very difficult. I am not very good at rhyming poems. If you want to have a go, feel free, but you do not have to write a rhyming poem unless you really want to have a go. Winter, this is called an acrostic poem, and you've got the word winter down the side, and then each of the sentences starts with the letters of winter. You could have a go at doing one like that if you wanted to. And then winter eyes, 
This one is just all about winter and this is a very descriptive poem. So look at winter with winter eyes as smoke curls from the rooftops to clear cobalt, cobalt sky. So that's talking about the colour blue. Breathe in winter past winter nose, the sweet scent of black birch where velvet moss grows. Walk through winter with winter feet on crackling ice or sloshy wet sleet. Look at winter with winter's eyes, the rustling of oak leaves as spring slowly nears. So thinking that poem's a very descriptive poem and I'd like you to try and do some description. I don't know, mind, if you want to do it in any of these ways, it's up to you, but do think about those verses. Okay, so when you're doing your writing, you might want to give your poem a title, often they do, and you put your title at the top and then think about how you want to set it out. Often to sort of have four lines and a space and then the next four lines, you might want to start off, often a repeated phrase is quite good, so you might want to just start off with, it's winter. It's winter. Or the air is cold and frosty. Or the cold, or oh, I might change that. The cold, frosty air. I might not have the and in there, I'm going to use a comma instead. So the cold, frosty air. The ice on the puddles. I did like playing with the icy puddles. The icy puddles. The icy puddles. It's cold out there. Okay, now what you can do is you can use some of these ideas to write your next verse. So I could start here. It's winter. I could change my middle two lines and then start at the bottom, or finish at the bottom, sorry, with it's cold out there. Doesn't matter what you do, have a go at using those ideas and it's really about the language that you're using today and that descriptive language. So I hope that goes well for you and I look forward to seeing your poems.